the Naked DJs podcast. Are they really naked? We know they expose themselves every day just so they can bring you the best of music. They like to stick it out there for everyone to hear. You can hear their podcast on Anchor.fm, YouTube, and any of your favorite podcast platforms. Welcome to the Living the Dream podcast with Curveball. If you believe, you can achieve. achieve, achieve. Welcome to the Living the Dream with Curveball podcast, a show where I interview guests that teach, motivate, and inspire. Today, I am joined by a special guest, none other than Kevin Roth. Kevin is a speaker, coach, recording artist who has sang the theme to a hit PBS TV show. In the year 2016, Kevin got a diagnosis of stage three melanoma. He was only given years to live. As you can see, it is now 2021. He beat the cancer by changing his diet, his lifestyle, getting rid of stress. And now he is teaching others what he did to do it. And now he's doing what he loves. Kevin, thank you so much for joining me today. Oh, it's a pleasure to be with you, Curtis. Why don't you? Absolutely. I appreciate you. Why don't you start off by giving everybody a little bit of background about yourself? Well, uh, I'm known as a dulcimer player. Uh, pictures and all that stuff you can find on my website, Kevin Roth Music. But I saw the dulcimer when I was 13 and had a record contract when I was 15. <laughs> Believe it or not, I had 10 records out and then I got into the kids' music business sort of by fluke. And what I ended up doing was uh, making it pretty big in that, becoming one of the main names. And it ended up singing the theme to Shining Time Station on PBS TV and touring all over the place and accumulating a lot of albums on my own label and for Sony Records and all this stuff. And I thought that being rich and famous would bring me joy, happiness, and love, luck, and lollipops, and it didn't. Um, and then I fell in love, and I thought that was going to do it. That did it for a little while, not terribly long <laughs> and uh you know um i was one of these guys that just thought you know when i when i quote make it there's i'll be on top of the mountain and that's where i'll be sitting and uh there's two sides to the mountain there's up and there's down <laughs> and you know in 2013 i'll tell you the truth that year sucked uh my father died he was 90 my nine-year relationship ended, uh, and I had a little retail business on the side that was bombing, um, and that all came down around then, and I decided I would go to Kansas. I was living in Florida at the time, and I thought, well, go to Kansas, hang out with your sister, and decide you know, what you want to do next. So I packed my little dog, Bosco, and all my dulcimers and a few pieces of clothing into my Jeep and drove to Kansas. And I wasn't there more than two months. And just on a routine appointment, a uh, dermatology appointment, this doctor said, I don't like that little spot on your nose. And you know what was weird about him is he was an older guy. And while I was in his office, I noticed a Buddha sitting on top of his shelf. And I thought, that's weird. You don't see Buddhas very often in dermatology office. Anyway, that, that turned into like a nightmare. So I, you know, I didn't expect to have any kind of cancer. I mean, I worked out, I was healthy, I didn't smoke. So it was one of those epiphany moments, like, who me? And uh, I started to do a lot of Googling. But the first thing that came to my mind was um, that I needed to, to not only get this, these two little spots removed with surgery, but I needed to find out if this had spread throughout my body. So we did scans and much to my surprise, it hadn't. But my oncologist said that within a year, 
there was a 70% chance it would return and then I'd be dead within two or three years and there was no cure and nothing I could do about it. So it was a long year, uh, but I decided when I heard that, that if I only had a couple of years to live, which I didn't believe, by the way, my gut told me they were wrong. But I thought, well, in case they're right, I'm going to have to change because, you know, this fame and fortune stuff that that didn't work. Love didn't work. So I need to really look at my life. And I decided I needed to know what really mattered to me, why it mattered to me, because that's what's going to keep you going. and get a plan together and then once you get the plan together to actually execute it so i went into a lot of spiritual searching and i came up with the answers fairly quickly that all that mattered to me was my music and writing my dog and that i didn't want to die in kansas (laughs) (laughs) me and dorothy so i decided i wanted to go back to san diego even though i was heavily in debt and it didn't make any sense on paper you know for me to move there but i said you know I, i'm going to go out i'm going to go out sipping margaritas and cappuccinos on the beach 24 7 and i'm going to go there i'm going to be a bohemian i'm going to do what i want in the way that i want and that's it thank god i didn't have any desire to travel the world or i would be in debt for the rest of my life so it was real simple, and I I looked for an apartment here. Um, my friends who live here told me there was no way I could get a one bedroom with parking and laundry for a thousand dollars. It was like a dream come true. Never, 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 never will that happen. I found one within two weeks, and I just came out and I did my life. I wrote a new album, which was my first new album in five years, and I uh, put it in the swimming pool for the Grammys. And I sort of never looked back. The cancer never returned. Um, I do regular checkups with the dermatologist and everything is good. And one day uh, someone said to me, you know, you ought to teach what you did to change your life. Uh, Because it wasn't just about the cancer. You know, uh, I believe the cancer was brought in to my life because of stress and inflammation, being overweight but mostly stress, because stress and inflammation will kill you. Um, it's, it's the reason for a lot of diseases. And I was very unhappy, you know? So I, I changed all that up and I thought, well, how am I gonna teach that? What do I do? You know, I'm trying to think, well, what, what did I do? And I thought, you know, every morning you get up, you make a really great cup of coffee, because I'm a coffee snob, I'll admit. You make a really good cup of coffee and I play the dulcimer in a meditative state, meaning that I just sort of ramble on it. I don't think of anything in particular. I let my mind go. I sort of like meditate myself musically, meditate, medicate myself musically. And clarity comes and I know what is right to do and what's not right to do. And I developed this philosophy, which I later found out was called mindful awareness. And if I pick up a vibe that something's not right, I change it. If I run into people who I think are negative and toxic, I leave. And I learn to turn off my phone. I don't check my email all the time. And I created a life that I really love. And it's, you know, it's a process. But one of the interesting things about this is when I started to teach this to people and I saw that their lives changed very quickly, I mentioned that I teach through experience. I don't teach through degrees and courses. Uh, So one of the things I teach is called riding the surfboard because life gets tough. And I teach how to get out of the darkness for people while dodging my own shadows because we've got them. And we don't need to be hard on ourselves. We need to just be clear what we want and stick to our guns. And if you discover what your purpose is in life, you'll you'll be really happy and you could be very, very healthy. So that's what I started to do. And then I wrote an online course for teachable.com. And um, now I teach people to play dulcimer with dulcimer meditation and I'm a life coach. Although I don't like that term, 
I think of it more as a life consultant, but um, that's what I do. That's my story. Well, after going through what you've gone through, in your opinion, what is fear? How real is it? And how do you c control it? That's a great question. Fear stands for false evidence appearing real. You can't live in the past. The past is done. So you take something like COVID, okay? That's got everybody up in arms. So you can't live in the future. You can think about it, but you can't be scared to death about what has already happened. You can wear masks, you can get your shots, you can avoid big crowds and, and do all that kind of stuff, but you don't need to fear it if you're doing the right thing. You know that by checking with your gut, you know? Checking your gut out and saying, well, you know, this feels right and this doesn't feel right. And you, you do what is right and you try and avoid what's wrong. And you also know that there's help. If you are afraid of something or if you have questions or doubts, there are people you can reach out to. Uh, but the biggest thing about fear, it may not seem related, but it is, is you have to love yourself. You got to give yourself a break. You got to be your own best friend. And then it's easy from there. What is the real meaning of true happiness in your opinion and why? True happiness to me is living your purpose-driven life, finding out what you love and making your life about it. If you have your health, you got your first couple million right there. If you can be kind to yourself and love yourself and accept yourself, flaws and all, then you can do that for other people. There's your next couple million. And the big thing for me about happiness is simplicity, silence, just being quiet and listening to the inner voice in your head that's speaking to you rather than listening to what's coming out of your mouth almost all the time. Um, I mean, just sitting with a cup of coffee and just being is happiness to me and, and hanging with my dog. <laughs> do you see life as being real or do you view it as just an illusion? Oh, that's a big question. Says Nina Simone. Oh my Lord. Well, since you're going there, I think life is a dream. Uh, quantum physics will tell you that really what exists is emptiness. So when you get the spiritual guys like Deepak Chopra or any of the other Oprahs or any of the guru teachers out there, they get together with the scientists now. And they have these conferences called SANS. Um, and you can, you can find this online. You can also watch YouTube videos on near-death experiences. But, you know, things like they say that, sp that the universe is expanding. But what is it expanding into? Nobody knows. People say, well, it's all your mind, right? Buddha says, no mind, no problem. But where is your mind? Well, they may say, well, I don't know, it's in your brain. But if you take a brain and you slice it open, you'll never find a mind. So it comes down to one word, which is consciousness. That's what everybody comes around to is consciousness. So you can call it God, you can call it Jesus, you can call it Buddha, you can call it Nate, whatever you call it. What I've learned through my own, uh, you know, investigation is that Consciousness has no form, it has no definition, it exists, yet it doesn't exist. So we become the dreamer within the dream, having the dream. So when we go to sleep at night, we have dreams, right? And we wake up and the dream's over. Life is like a walking dream. So I don't think that this life is is real. I think it's just an illusion and you can look into things like non-duality and if you want to get really heavy in th something there's a website called ajata 
sunyata.com is a friend of mine, Robert Wolf, who's a wonderful, wonderful writer, has a book called Emptiness, which explains this thing called ajata, which means emptiness. If someone feels stuck, what advice would you give them to go about changing their lives? Well, if they, I have a lot of clients that come to me that are stuck. So the, what I do, uh, you know, if they can't afford to work with me one-to-one, -one, they, they take my course, right? Uh, which is on teachable.com. If they come to me and we work together, what I tell them is first, you have to know what matters. Then you need to know why it matters to you. And then you need a plan. So if you want to lose weight, so you know that matters. Why does it matter? Well, it matters because you're going to feel better and you're going to be in better health. But sometimes that's not enough. So some guy has a heart attack, right? He's overweight. He has a heart attack. And the doctor tells him, okay, we patched it this time. But the next one, I'm not all that sure you're going to live. And he thinks, I have two daughters and a wife, and I don't want them to be fatherless and, or my wife to, you know, lose a husband. So that's his motivation. That's a real big dig down, hit your bottom motivation to change. So he gets a game plan. He hires a nutritionist and someone who can be like a personal trainer or whatever. And then he does it. So I got to tell you, to be honest with you, I love to bitch and moan most of my life. When I got a record deal, when I got a million dollars, it didn't matter what I got. It was good for about half a second. And then, well, how come you're not on the top of the chart? You know, on and on and on. It took one thing, it took less than a minute. And it was, Mr. Roth, I have bad news for you. You've got stage three melanoma. You may have a couple of years to live. That was all I needed to hear for me to get real. For me to say, you need to lose 30 pounds because inflammation can cause cancer. You need to get rid of this stress because, you know, <laughs> you got to either get busy living or get busy dying. So those are the things that I would tell people to do when you're ready to change. You mentioned about riding the surfboard of life. How do you stay in balance with life's waves on that surfboard of life? So life is emotional, mental, physical, and spiritual. This is, this is by the way, is the philosophies that, that I teach my students and, and clients. Life isn't meant to be in balance, okay? We have surfboard guys here in San Diego. Uh, you know, you can go down to Pacific Beach and watch these guys ride in the waves. They fall off and they get back on, but they understand balance. And that's what you need in life. So as an example, if you're having a hard day at work, that's a mental thing, okay? Your ego's involved or someone's dumped some work on you you shouldn't have. So you need to think to yourself, how is this affecting me emotionally? Uh, how is it affecting me physically? Do I feel stressed? How is it affecting me spiritually? So at the very least, you could go out for a, a half of an hour walk and get your head clear but you need to stay in balance. There's a lot of times that I feel out of balance and I don't know why, or I don't know what's going on. I'm not clear about it myself and I'm stuck. So I go and I either play the dulcimer and it comes to me because of the way that I do this thing called dulcimer meditation, or I basically do what I teach. And I say, uh, you know, what what is wrong if you know what do you want what's not working here and what do you need to adjust it because nine times out of ten it's your mind and i'll give you a great example of this you're in a really bad mood right you're in your home and you know you're just feeling sad or lonely or whatever it is and somebody calls out of the blue you haven't heard from in a while you pick up the phone you know hey how you doing you know and all and your mood completely changes your chemicals in your body, in your brain, completely change. When you walk, your chemistry completely changes. And that's how fast you can change your state. So that's what I would suggest people do when they get stuck or they, I teach a very simple breathing exercise. It takes less than, God, a minute. And you can get into focus that way. I do that on my course. 
So those are what to do, you know, when you get stuck. Why do you feel like relationships need to work collectively first before they can work individually? No one is responsible for your happiness, but you. And relationships need to work collectively as you need to hear and feel and sense other people and and negotiate and have good times and accept some of the bad times. But if you don't have your own stuff together, if you're codependent, if you are being abused mentally or physically or emotionally, sometimes spiritually, it's up to you to change. So what happens with a lot of people is when I mention what it takes to change, they say, God, that's a lot of work. I say, it really isn't. Staying where you are unhappy is more work. But that word fear comes up. They're afraid to leave or they're afraid to talk to their partner about going for counseling. You know, I mean, we're human beings. We have flaws. Um, we don't, you know, there's a saying, do you want to be right or do you want to be happy? But I think you need to really get yourself together as much as you possibly can and accept yourself and that'll make everything else go a lot easier it'll be a lot clearer you have the phrase called the new rich explain what that means <laughs> well i was rich right i had over a million dollars well, this was oh i don't know 15 20 years ago so a million dollars these days i guess they don't consider rich but I didn't have any happiness. And, you know, I was reading a quote about Bob Marley because I was listening to him today. And his last words to his son was money can't buy life or something like that. So, you know, this isn't a dress rehearsal, even though it's a dream. Um, the new rich is less is more. Happiness is wealth. Health is worth a lot of money, you know. Being at peace is, is the new rich. And COVID woke us up to a, a lot of people to that because they lost their jobs. And they a lot of people aren't going back to the jobs, not because they're particularly lazy, but they realize, you know what? I wasn't happy in that job. So I'm going to try and create my own business. Well, I have a lot of clients that come to me that want to start a business. You know, how do you do it? So that's what the new rich is. You know, I unfortunately or fortunately, however it worked out, lost a lot of my money through the stock market and then the real estate market. But at my happiest was when I was almost completely broke. And, I, and that was about the time that I got the cancer diagnosis and everything blossomed from there. So, you know, all my debts paid off, I had uh, money in the bank, you know, all that kind of stuff. But happiness for me is doing me, is doing what I love and sharing that with other people and helping change their lives. That's the new rich. Well, tell us about your course and what people can expect when they take your course. Well, the course you can find if you go to kevinroth.teachable.com. Dot com, or you can get the link on my website, kevinroth.org. And what I did is I videotaped eight uh, modules that are anywhere between three and six, seven minutes. And each module covers uh, what really matters, why, how to get a game plan, what to do with a game plan. Uh, I have a dulcy meditation there for you. I teach the breathing exercises. And there's homework. Uh, you get to um, watch the module and then come up with the, the lists of things that are important to you and really get a grasp on, on what it is that makes you tick. One of the really interesting things about that course um, was that uh, the students that have taken it have gone over it two or three times before contacting me because you, you can contact me afterwards and get a free 30 minute session, which I'm also offering, by the way, if anyone uh, who listens to this program is interested in, in a free kind of what should I do with my life session, you can certainly get one of those because I do offer those free 30 minute sessions. 
Um, but they take it seriously, and uh, it's been it's been wonderful to watch all that change. Well, you're also a recording artist. Tell us what kind of music you do. Well, I do what I guess it's uh, th there's a couple things that I do. Um, the one thing is uh, dulcy meditation, which is dulcimer instrumental music for meditation. And then the last album I wrote is called The Deviant Dulcimerists. And, you know, these are on iTunes and Amazon. And uh, that's what I do musically. And when I go back out to start doing retreats and workshops for this, the stuff that I teach, I always add a mini concert at the end of it because people, you know, like to hear me sing and play. But, you know, I'm not interested in going on tour anymore, having big record deals or anything like that. I I found a new purpose. Uh, it was it was it was a hell of a way to get there, but um, I got there, and I find it really really rewarding. Well, you talked about the PBS hit that you sang the theme theme song to. Why don't you give us a little sample of that so we can hear what it sounds like? Well, I'm not near a dulcimer, but um, you know it. Uh, it's a, well, the, the music was written by Joe Raposo and it went to uh, reach for the wind, reach for the whistle, go where the rails may run, you know. And, uh, you know, an interesting story about that song is the producer of the show had put his daughter to bed with my lullabies for Little Dreamer album. And he was in New York and he found me and he contacted me and asked if I would sing the theme to the show and invited me to go to New York to meet with him. So I was in Pennsylvania at the time and I took a train up to New York and he told me that the show was gonna star Ringo of the Beatles and it would probably be a, a really big show. It was gonna be on PBS and he wanted me to sing the theme and, uh, and that he was gonna play, he was gonna pay me a flat fee instead of royalty. So I took it back to my music attorney who God been my music attorney for ages and he said, don't do it. It's, it's not a good deal because you're not going to make a lot of money. You know, you want to get royalties every time it plays. You understand this because you're, you're, you've been in the business. So I went back and I said to the guy, uh, well, this is what my lawyer wants. And he said, well, we're not going to do that. Uh, we're just going to pay you this money. And if you don't want to do it, I understand. Um, you know, it's New York City. There's a lot of singers here. Uh, but you decide what you want. And I went with my gut, which is one of the things that I teach in, the, in this course. And it was the first time that I didn't listen to my lawyer. My gut said, if you have to pay, pay him to sing that, you better damn well do it. And it was out of my register too. I had to go to my voice teacher. We had to work on me getting some higher notes. And I sang it. The show was a major hit. And suddenly I went from getting a couple hundred dollars as sort of a folk singer to being paid thousands and playing music halls where I would go see my, my heroes, Peter, Paul, Mary, Joni Mitchell. And it was amazing. It, it was just like a rocket launch. And um, it's, it's a big cult show now online, but that's how, that's how that, that thing happened to be. That's part of that little dream. <laughs> So tell us the name of that show again so people can check it out. Shining Time Station. And I sing the theme. I wrote a couple of videos to it as well. You have any upcoming projects that people need to know about that you're working on? Well, I'm writing a book based on my course. And uh, I'm doing some online workshops and seminars for what I teach. And that's about what I have planned so far. I am working on a new course about habits because my other course will tell you what to do, but it doesn't explain uh, why, you, why you need to form daily habits to get to where you wanna go because it's not gonna happen sitting on a piece of paper looking at it, even with a, a grade A++. It's no good unless you actually do it. And when you do it and you form those habits, 
then you see results. So a great case of that is when I lost 30 pounds, um, I did it through intermediate fasting. Um, and there were days I was really hungry, but I thought, you know what? Look, look, look at your, your six months pregnant here, Kevin. <laughs> <You know? laughs> and each time, you know, each week I weighed myself, I went down a little more, I looked a little better and that was a momentum. But the habit was to do the intermediate fasting, to eat the kind of food that I was supposed to eat, to do the certain exercises. That was my habit with one day off. And that's what got me there. Uh, it wasn't by knowing what I was supposed to do. Uh, and I had failed a thousand times, by the way, before I finally got real about it. Uh, and that, that took the cancer diagnosis. Um, you know, but live and learn. So give out your contact information, your website and social media links so people can stay connected with you. No, that's great. Yeah, I'd love to hear from people. And, I, you know, if you have any questions, reach out to me. And uh, the course, I think, is on sale or something like that. And by the way, you can you can get the I think it's one ninety nine one hundred ninety nine dollars. But if you don't like it. There's I think a, a 15 or 30 day money back guarantee. So you really have nothing to lose, everything to gain. So, yeah, I'm, I'm here uh, for those who want to reach out or hopefully some of this advice. Uh, we'll get some people started on their on their road to wherever they want to go. KevinRoth.org, are you on Instagram, Facebook, any social media platforms like that? I am on Facebook, uh, Kevin Roth, and I'm on Instagram. I don't remember the name of it, though, because I'm not on there very much. You know, the interesting thing about life is that everything is social media you know, to promote. In fact, when I start a podcast this fall, which is called Happiness and the Art of Being, um, you know, I guess I've got to get involved with social media, but my, my gut is telling me to pull back off it. Uh, I think it's a little toxic, but I'm going to keep on Facebook because I like posting pictures of my dog <laughs> and my artwork. And occasionally something on Instagram, but I, I'm, I, I like when people find me, I don't like, you know, Facebook ads and being in people's faces. It just doesn't feel like something I doesn't feel like the right thing to do for me. You know, maybe I need a manager, Curtis, huh? <laughs> maybe so. Well, tell us about that new podcast and give us some final thoughts to close it out. Well, that's really exciting. Um, I love doing podcasts. I've loved doing, doing your shows too. The, the reason I like these podcasts is that the, uh, the hosts are asking intelligent questions. I mean, we're really getting into conversations, which I love. And I decided to start a podcast and one, a couple of my guests, one of them is my musical hero, Paul of Peter, Paul and Mary. Noel Paul Stuckey is gonna be on. Uh, a guy named Michael James, who teaches uh, about Ramana Maharshi, who is a wonderful spiritual teacher from India, who's deceased, uh, at least his body's gone. Um, so he'll be on the show. I have um, some other people lined up that are e either musical artists or they're people who are in the psychology spiritual field. There's um, people who deal with the subject of happiness and what is happiness and how do you how do you discover what that is for you and stick to your guns you know one of the i don't forget the guy's name i have it written down because i i just heard about him but he was a he made a lot of money on on wall street and when covid hit and he had and he left the city he and his wife and children decided to just absolutely change their life because a couple of their friends died. And he bought this cabin in Tennessee somewhere in the middle of nowhere and just kind of reinvented his life. And he said he's never been happier. You know, doesn't make the kind of money he was making and doesn't live in the, in, you know, at large, um, but he, he's living. So he's really taken the plunge and, and that's what the show is about to help people reevaluate. Are they happy and what they can do if they're not 
to be happy. Ladies and gentlemen, please be sure to follow, rate, review, and share this episode to as many people as possible after listening. Android listeners, go to the Google Play Store and download the Living a Dream with Curveball podcast app. Kevin Roth, thank you so much for joining me today. Oh, you're welcome. Thanks for having me. For more information on the Living the Dream podcast, visit www.djcurveball.com. Until next time, stay focused on living the dream.